Hello gorgeous people, what is going on and welcome back to another video. Have you ever heard of the SCP Foundation? Well, if not, let me tell you a little bit about them. The SCP Foundation is a fictional organization. Their goal is actually in the SCP acronym, Secure, Contain, Protect. The Foundation has the goal of containing anomalous objects, entities, and phenomena. These things that they contain are called SCPs. And you may have heard or seen a few of them before. SCP-173, a concrete sculpture that moves at high speeds, killing anyone nearby, but is incapable of moving when in direct line of sight of a person. SCP-049, a humanoid entity that looks like a medieval plague doctor. Its touch is lethal to humans, killing anyone who comes into contact with it within minutes. Or even SCP-087, a dark, seemingly infinite staircase that has other creepy SCPs living inside it. I actually have a video on the channel of me exploring SCP-087. And these are just three of thousands of creepy SCPs on the SCP wiki. But why am I telling you all this? Well, that's because today we will be watching Psychosis SCP slash VHS. This video shows us what seems to be the first documented instance of SCP-513. Now, what does SCP-513 do, you might ask? Well, you just have to keep watching to find out. This video that we're watching today is by Reach Animations, whose channel link will be in the description down below. Please be sure to go and support your analog horror content creators. Now, I did actually watch this video first on one of my recent live streams, but I liked it so much I thought I had to make a video about it. I also want to introduce you guys more to SCP lore and SCPs in general, because I think it'll be an interesting topic for us to start diving into on the channel. So if you're new to SCPs, I guess consider this your intro to the universe. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this a lot, just as much as I did. So here we go. Enough of me talking. Let's jump right in. The video you are about to watch contains disturbing imagery, loud sounds, flashing lights, blood, and suicide. Viewer discretion is highly advised. You heard it here first. There's your warning, chat. SCP logo. Uh, for those that don't know, SCP stands for Secure, Contain, Protect. They're basically like an organization that captures like anomalous creatures or monsters or locations, and they try to contain them and protect them from affecting the outside world. Very similar to like analog horror creatures that you've heard of before. Stand by for mandatory identification screening. All right. <clears throat> Please maintain direct eye contact with the circle on your left. All right. Failure to maintain eye contact may result in dizziness, nausea, and hallucination. Hallucination? For, for why? Begin tape. I'm excited. The vibes are immaculate so far for this. The following footage was retrieved from a small cottage located on the east side of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. IA officials have identified the, pros the possessor of the footage as Franklin Bailey, a 26-year-old white male. Copy that. <clears throat> Upon reviewing the footage as well as other recordings retrieved from his residence, it was determined he was a detectorist. Or rather, he partook in activities involving a metal detector. Is that actually what they call people that use metal detectors? Detectorists? <laughs> it appears that this particular activity is what brought Franklin to come into contact with the first documented instance of SCP-513. This was his experience. I don't think I've ever heard of 513. October 17th, 1991. 9.32 p.m. Is that what people call me? An analog horrorist? <laughs> okay, why are we using a metal detector at night? Yeah. <sighs> 
What do we have here? Damn, just a nail. Boring. Let's find treasure or something. Keep searching. I mean, I think we should still do this in the morning, not at night. This is me trying to find my phone at 1 a.m. Another nail. I haven't gotten anything good out of these woods in a bit. I've always wanted one of these things to just like go on the beach or something and use them just for fun. Probably would find something on a beach. Like people forget stuff all the time. Cowbell. How did this get out here? Oh no 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 no! Isn't there an SCP where if you ring its bell? Damn, this thing sounds awful. I did. Huh? What? Really quiet. Oh, bro, you need a better headlamp. Now the light's dying. Come on. Bro. <sighs> Must be a bad bulb. I gotta get home. I don't wanna be stuck in the dark. You know, <clears throat> characters in horror always love to make up like every excuse why creepy things are happening to them. Oh, I just rang this creepy got bell a and nails. Some junk. Great, but I didn't really expect much to be honest. Just ring this creepy bell, and now the light stops working. Weird. Yeah, he took the bell. I was thinking the same thing. It's still really quiet. I wonder if that cowbell scared anything off, or attracted something else. It is significantly quieter than it was before. But maybe that's just because we don't hear the beeping. Oh. Franklin then returned home, unaware of the dangers that were currently being manifested. 
Upon attempting to sleep, he seemed to realize he was incapable of doing so. This is the first sign that SCP-513 has taken effect. Interesting. 11.23 p.m. So I, I can't sleep, clearly. Uh, I need a cup of water or coffee. I'd feel a little safer in my home, though, I think. Ooh! Who the fuck? He's over there! Who the fuck is there? There's someone in my house. There's someone in my... There's someone in my house. There's someone in my house. All right, block the door or something, brother. Damn, phone line didn't connect. He's trying to call the police. You gotta be shitting me! Did he bang on something? Because I feel like once I heard the banging, I'd be like, all right, nah, I'm not seeing or hearing shit. Like, this is very real. Oh, no, not you opening the door. See? Nothing. I just need sleep. I'm just sleep deprived. One oh two a.m. It's like two hours later. Just leave me alone. Please. Leave me alone. Oh, nah. You know when that you know when people like start losing it a little bit and they start saying they're seeing things you think that's the type of stuff they see in real life because <laughs> that's horrifying that is genuinely horrifying i would think i was losing my mind at that point how do you explain that to yourself in a real world situation you're not um 
you're not going to actually think that the cowbell summoned that demon, you know what I mean? Or whatever this is, this SCP. You're not gonna think that. I mean, technically, if you're in the SCP world, you might know about the existence of SCPs, but calling from a real world standpoint. Yeah, I don't, but like, would you leave? I don't know if your chances would be better in the house or not. If he has a window in that room, maybe I would escape from the window and then try to dip. Like if I had a car outside or something. Yeah, people that suffer from like sleep paralysis demons, is that what they look like? If so, I'm so sorry <laughs> that you have to deal with that. Before we continue, I want to thank Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. If you ever get into an accident, submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is super easy. Your serious injury could be worth millions. Morgan & Morgan has seen recent verdicts like 6 million in New York, 12 million in Florida, and 26 million in Pennsylvania. The firm is not afraid to go to court to fight for the biggest award possible to compensate you. It only takes a few minutes to see if you have a case and the fee is totally free unless you win did you know you could start a claim with america's largest injury law firm in just a click it's so easy you can start your claim now with morgan and morgan at www.forthepeople.com slash immortal marcus or click the link in the description thank you again to morgan and morgan for sponsoring today's video 2 30 a.m like an hour 20 minutes later W America, my boy's got the Glock or the gun, whatever he's got. He's got something. He's got he's got a pistol. That's all that matters. American W. <laughs> Where are you? Not that it matters, because I know you're in here. This thing's probably <gasps> immune, or like would not be affected by bullets. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god, no. No, 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 At 5.42 a.m., local containment units arrived at the scene. Franklin was found dead in his bedroom. Upon further investigation, it was ruled that his death was an act of suicide, a common product upon being exposed to SCP-513. SCP-513 is now contained within site blank and will continue being tested due to its anomalous properties. End tape. Psychosis. Dude, that was crazy good. Wow. That was really, really good. We're going to go through all the credits I want. I want anybody that worked on this to get their credit. Wow, I did not, I like, you know what's funny? While we were watching, well, it's not funny, but while we were watching, I was thinking like, this did say like warnings for um, like suicide and whatnot. And I was like, where, where is the suicide gonna be in this? Like, I thought he might end up doing it because he was like going insane. I didn't think it would be that way though. Like once the gun came up, that thought completely went out the window. I want to look up um, some of the specifics about this SCP though, just to see how it works. That was, that voice acting though, that screaming was really, really well done. 
Very, very well done. No, thank you. That was fire. Oh my god, that's so cool. And they included the SCP wiki for it. SCP-513 is suspended in a one cubic meter block of gelatin and contained within a soundproofed climate controlled cell. The gelatin must be inspected daily for degradation or loss of integrity. An emergency inspection will be carried out immediately following any earthquake, explosion, or sonic event grade 2 or higher. Personnel performing the inspection are to wear earplugs and active noise-canceling earmuffs at all times while inside SCP-513 cell. Oh, so it's mostly if you hear the bell then. Because if you're preventing it with noise-canceling earmuffs, then it must you must be fine as long as you don't hear it. Physically, SCP-513 is an unremarkable rusty cowbell. No marks or engravings are visible on its surface due to the large amount of corrosion. Attempts to remove the rust chemically or mechanically have had no success. Any noise produced by SCP-513 immediately induces strong anxiety in all sentient beings who hear it, regardless of their previous mental status. Exposure victims report feelings of being watched by an unseen entity and present elevated heart rates and blood pressure. Roughly one hour after exposure, victims begin to catch glimpses of SCP-5131 when opening doors, walking past mirrors, turning heads, or performing any other actions that result in a sudden change in visual perception. Upon being sighted, 5131 reportedly turns away and runs out of view before disappearing without a trace. So that part where it runs away would probably be when he first walked out of his room. I, what did he say? He was going to get water or something? Like when he first walks out, that's probably what that is. Sightings recur every 14 to 237 minutes. This stalking behavior inevitably causes extreme sleep deprivation as victims are frequently disturbed by SCP-5131's presence in their quarters. Victims able to fall asleep during SCP-5131's appearance report being physically assaulted by it. Upon the victim's awakening, SCP-513 flees as usual. The sleep deprivation along with the mental stress caused by 513's behavior invariably induces paranoia, aggression, hypervigilance, and depression. All test cases but one have ended with the test subject's suicide. So the reason why he, I guess, didn't shoot at it could have been not like his own fault, if that makes sense. Like because it's messing with his head, he doesn't shoot at it. Even though I don't think shooting at it would have made a difference anyway. Even if this thing could be damaged physically, I doubt it would die from a gunshot. So that was Psychosis SCP slash VHS. And obviously, as you could tell, I really loved that video. And I hope you guys did too. I think it's a good introduction to these SCP type things I want to start covering on the channel. That being said, if you guys know of any other sick SCP analog horror related videos, please let me know their names in the comments down below. Or you could also join my Discord. I have an analog horror suggestions channel there, and I regularly look at it to try to know what series to go over next. Also, please, please, please go over to Reach Animation's YouTube channel. The link will be at the top of the description down below. Please go over there, subscribe, show support. They have plenty of other analog horror styled videos that are really, really cool. Please be sure to go and support your analog horror content creators. And all right, guys, otherwise, I hope you did enjoy the video. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We do videos like this all the time on the channel. And if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like. It helps spread it out to new people. All right, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Peace.